Today, we're talking about installing Linux with VirtualBox. Stay tuned. Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. And today I'm going over a tutorial where I will show you guys how you can use VirtualBox to virtualize Linux on your Windows operating system or your Mac OS operating system. So to get things started with this, you guys are going to have to download a few things. One of those things that you're gonna to have to download is VirtualBox. I'm gonna show you briefly how to do this and install it on both a Mac OS operating system and a Windows operating system. So let's go ahead and get started with that right now. The first thing that we're gonna do is go to virtualbox.org. You can just search Google for VirtualBox also and you'll come up to the webpage that you need to go to. On the left-hand side, we'll go to downloads. This is going to be the same same for Windows or Mac OS. You can see right now I am on my Mac. So once we go to the downloads page for the Mac OS, we're going to do the OXS hosts um, download here. And we're just going to click on save. For your Windows machine, you're just going to click on the Windows host download and you're just going to save that. Now, once your program finishes downloading from whichever respective operating system that you are currently using, you're going to go ahead and go to that download and you're going to run it. So for Mac OS, once you run it, you are just going to drag your VirtualBox icon into applications. Once you drag the VirtualBox icon into the applications folder, you're going to go into the applications folder and double click on that VirtualBox icon again. And basically from here, all you're going to do is pretty much keep hitting continue. There's not really much that you need to do here unless you want to specifically move where the program gets installed onto your hard disk. If you have a different partition that you'd like that on, make sure you specify it in this point when you go to change install location. For me, I have one partition because I love to plug in external hard drives all the time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click install. Once my password, put in my fingerprint, we're good. From your Windows machine, you're just gonna go to where the download is and you're gonna double click it and start the install. Click on next. And again, this is pretty much the same uh, for the Mac. You are just gonna keep hitting next a bunch of times. This is just from a beginner level. If you're looking at more advanced uh, tutorials in regards to VirtualBox, you might wanna look a little bit further into the YouTubes and see what you can find. Basically, everything that's checked off here is pretty much good to go, ready to install. So just keep clicking on next. Next, next, next. This message is basically saying that it's gonna start utilizing your wireless card or your ethernet card to handle some of the networking within VirtualBox. Uh, you're just gonna hit you next, yes, and then next, next. Uh, here's a little Windows prompt. You guys probably didn't see that, but just keep hitting next and then it'll install. Really, there's not much to the installation of VirtualBox. That's the easiest part. That is the easiest thing that we have to do right now. Now, once you have VirtualBox installed respectively on each machine, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start this bad boy up. So go ahead and double click on VirtualBox. So now you can see we have VirtualBox running, but we don't have any operating systems installed. The next part of this is that we have to go out and actually download the ISOs. So you can determine which ISO that you would like to use, which Linux distribution that is going to work best for you. If you are not sure, I recommend just using like Ubuntu or Debian. Those are great operating systems to start with. You can also start with Kali Linux. That's a good one. So you're gonna go to each one of these websites respectively and find the download that is right for you. So from our Mac, we can go out and say, we want uh, Kali Linux ISO. Just do a Google search, right? Uh, so the first page that comes up is kali.org slash downloads. From here, we're going to choose the distribution of Kali Linux that we'd like to use. I'm on a 64-bit Mac. You could be on a 32-bit operating system, but I highly doubt that. Really not a lot of machines are running 32-bit OSs anymore. But uh, from the Mac, we're gonna download the 64-bit. Uh, from Windows, we're gonna download 64-bit. Basically, no matter what operating system you are using, it does not make a difference as to what distribution you would like to use. They're all going to be the same, unless you have some type of different architecture set up within your machine. But whether you're on a Windows machine or Mac operating system, it's gonna be the same download. So from the download page, we're just gonna go ahead and go to the Kali Linux 64, and it's gonna take us to the offensive security page. And from here, we will actually download our 64-bit um, Kali Linux. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the Kali Linux VM 64-bit um, 7z, that's a 7-zip file. So that's fine, we'll go ahead and download that. 
Uh, let's say that we wanted Ubuntu. Uh, we'll go to, to Ubuntu ISO. Uh, first page that comes up is from the Ubuntu website. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then right from here, we're just gonna go ahead and click on download. I want you to donate. I suggest you donate if you can. So once you get to that page, the download uh, prompts right away. You're just gonna go ahead and click on save and it'll begin that download. So now at this point, you'll probably wanna pause the video, wait for your ISOs to download, and we'll come back to where we need to go. So once your download finishes, you can go to that download location and just make a note of where that download location is because you will need that once we start this installation process within VirtualBox. So we're gonna head over to VirtualBox and we are going to click on new and we are gonna call this operating system Ubuntu. And as we type that in, we already have Ubuntu 64-bit selected because our architecture on this Mac is 64-bit. If you are on a Windows machine, you may have to restart your computer and go into the BIOS and find somewhere within the BIOS where it says something about Hyper-V virtualization, and you may have to enable that. There's going to be something in regards to that in your BIOS if you are not getting 64-bit as an option within VirtualBox. Now, if you're still not getting that option, you may have a 32-bit operating system that you are running from, so you will need to download the 32-bit version of one of the Linux distributions. So now that we have our operating system named, we're just gonna call it Ubuntu, because that's what it is. We're gonna go ahead and click on continue. From here, it's gonna ask what the allocated memory size is that you would like for this machine. Now this is determined based on your current RAM size on your physical machine. So for me, you know, I have a MacBook here. There's 16 gigs of RAM within this MacBook. That does not mean that I could allocate 16 gigs of RAM to this virtual machine. If I did that, it would mean bad news for my machine because it more than likely would not run properly once I get the virtual machine kicked off and start doing things within it. So this says the recommended memory size is one gig, but I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to four gigs. I know four gigs is probably a lot, but it should be fine within my operating system. I have 16 gigs of RAM available, so I should not run into an issue. I highly doubt that there's gonna be a time where one of these Linux operating systems that I'm using is going to utilize all of that RAM unless I'm using Google Chrome, then probably will happen. So anyway, we're gonna click on continue. And from here, it's asking us, um, do we wanna add a virtual hard disk, create a virtual hard disk, or use an existing virtual hard disk? We're just gonna go ahead and click on create. From here, it's asking us what type of image we wanna use. Do we wanna use a virtual box disk image or a VDI, a virtual hard disk, a VHD, or a virtual machine disk, the VMDK? For us, just for this purpose, just because we're trying to keep this as basic as possible, we're just gonna go with VDI. We're just gonna click on continue. So with this screen right here, it's asking us, do we want VirtualBox to dynamically allocate size for our hard drive, or do we wanna set a fixed size for our hard drive? And when I refer to hard drive here, this is meaning the Linux hard drive that is being virtualized to house this operating system. If we go with an allocated size, it'll only utilize the storage that we set within the next screen. If we set a fixed size right now and say, this operating system and this hard drive for our virtual machine is only allowed to use 60 gigs, that's all that we will be able to use, period. That is the only space that will be rationed for our Linux operating system. But we're gonna go ahead and click dynamically allocated. And from here, we can, if we do a little bit of reading, it says select the size of the virtual hard disk in megabytes. The size is the limit on the amount of data that a virtual machine will be able to store on the hard disk. So we could say 10 gigs, that is what's recommended at this point, but we can go ahead and bump this up and say, we want this uh, virtual machine to just use uh, 20 gigs. And we're gonna fix that. 20 gigs is the limit for this hard drive, so it should not use any more than that within the installation. We should have 20 gigs available uh, of space with the install minus the actual size of the operating system. So we're gonna go ahead and click on create, and from here, we can see on our left-hand side that we have Ubuntu. It's powered off, there's nothing there. So once we have that done, and again, this is the same, whether you do it from the Mac or from a Windows machine, so have no fear. We can click on our Ubuntu virtual machine and we can click on start. From here, it's going to prompt us with an ISO. This is where the location of the ISO you downloaded will come in handy, so make sure you know where that's at, because from here, we are going to look for our ISO. So I know mine's in downloads and it's under Linux ISO. So for this one, we are gonna go ahead and select our Ubuntu ISO, and we're gonna click on okay, start, 
and we're gonna start it off. So from here, it's gonna start booting into the Ubuntu operating system so we can start the installation. So once the ISO finally loads, it's gonna ask us, do we wanna try Ubuntu or do we wanna install Ubuntu? So for the case of this video, we are going to install Ubuntu. So you can go ahead and pick your selected language. I'm going to use English. And then the next screen is what apps would you like to install? install to start with uh, normal installation and shows what we can install with the normal and then it shows what we can install with the minimal you can also choose to download updates while it's installing and install third-party software for graphics and wi-fi hardware and additional media format so we're going to select uh, the downloads and the install third party and we are going to go ahead and click continue this next screen is something that you will want to pay attention to because it might throw you off based on the wording it says erase disk and install ubuntu now you might think oh is this going to erase my hard drive is going to erase all of the information that is on my computer. No, it's not going to erase anything within your computer. This is only erasing and then formatting the virtual hard disk that we set aside in the previous steps before. You can go ahead and click erase disk and install Ubuntu. It's not going to affect your primary system, only utilizing your virtual hard disk that we set aside. We're not gonna talk about the other options because again, this is a basic video, so we're just gonna go ahead and click install now. And just a warning about writing information to the disk, we're just gonna go ahead and click continue. We are going to select our time zone. I'm in Chicago, hit continue. Uh, from here, we are going to set our information, so our login information and things like that. The computer name, we're gonna make it ITCQ. For our username, we're also going to use ITCQ. And then you can set your own password and we will have it log in automatically because it's just our virtual machine, so we're okay with that. Go ahead and click next, and now it's going to start the installation process of Ubuntu. So we'll come back. All right, so now we are being prompted to restart our computer because the installation is complete. So now we're gonna go ahead and click restart now. This will only reboot the virtual operating system that we just created. So it'll go through this rebooting process and then it'll bring us to our main desktop of our Ubuntu installation. So now here we are at our main screen of Ubuntu. That was the installation process for installing a distribution of Linux within VirtualBox. It's identical whether you are on a Mac or a Windows operating system, so have no fear about that. No matter what, you can get one of these operating systems installed and start tinkering around. I highly suggest that you guys utilize linuxacademy.com. That's what I'm currently using so I can start learning Linux. And part of that learning process for me was learning how to install Linux in a VM and then being able to break it if need be, figuring out how to disable things from the task process and then finding those within the actual GUI of this operating system. And it's been kind of fun trying to figure that stuff out. I haven't dove super deep into this yet because I am still learning the basics but so far, so good. I've installed Kali Linux on a spare laptop of mine. I've also installed CentOS on another laptop of mine that I gave to my daughter because she's been bugging me for a laptop. So here you go, you're gonna learn Linux, have fun. She's enjoying it so far. I'm enjoying it so far, and this is just part of that process. And this is one of our first tutorials on Linux, installing Linux. We'll talk more about some of the different GUIs, and then we'll talk more about the terminal and other videos as well. But I don't want you guys to be afraid of Linux like I was, because now that I'm starting to learn Linux and see what it's about, understand the operating system, the GUI, the terminal, I've had no issues. I actually enjoy this. I thoroughly have enjoyed this 110% every step of the way. So stay tuned for more Linux videos. I hope you guys enjoy this stuff. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please hit me in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you guys. As always, take it easy.